Hmm. Well, rather benign, uh, benignly, the counselor officer uh, diplomatically suggests that I walk back to India and live there for the rest of my life. <laughs> he assures me that they won't arrest me. The embassy authorities in Kathmandu. Mm -hmm. And, um, or uh, the alternative, he proposes, he can issue me a embassy piece of paper that will get me on a plane from Kathmandu to John F. Kennedy Airport in New York City. One way only. Mm hmm. And, uh, you know what? Since I need a passport to get to Greece, yeah, and to my Ganesh cave, I, I, I don't hesitate. I just say, um, yeah, I'll return to the United States to face the music. I cable my parents to send me a plane ticket. I fly down from the Himalayas Wow, so beautiful. <laughs> to New Delhi. Mm -hmm. And uh, in New Delhi, I just let it stretch my legs going to the transfer line. But there's an American embassy official preventing me from getting off the airplane. <laughs> this is way too serious. I mean, I bought my own ticket. You know, I'm going. And you know what? I get it. This is deportation on the cheap. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, it's a long flight. 50 years ago, these flights were, you know, 20 hours. Just the flying time. Huh? Mm. What am I supposed to be afraid and have some kind of panic attack? Well, plane gets to Tehran, Beirut, London. Can't get off the plane all the time. Boy, what a bedraggled mess I was when I showed up at the airport. I was like yawning, rubbing my eyes, scuffling uh, down the large stairway. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I hear my name shouted. Oh, great. Uh, what? Yeah, that's me. What? You are under arrest. <laughs> the FBI is shouting up at me before my foot even touches <clears throat> America. Mm hmm. Why am I not surprised? Yeah. Well, these guys, well pressed gray suits, mm -hmm. uh, into their police car at the bottom of the stairs from the plane into a holding cell at the airport. And then <laughs> they explain that I'll be the guest tonight of the United States government in the Tombs. Tombs? Uh, heavy duty prison underground in Manhattan. I've never been in prison before. Tombs. Pretty gruesome. Yeah, see, entirely underground. You know what, this massive prison comes off as like a uh, massive air, air, air airplane hangar. And within it, this awful belly of a beast, a giant beast, are, are individual cages that have eight sets of bunk beds in them. You know, 16 inmates in a cage here, 16 inmates in a cage there, all in this big, like, Tomb-like aircraft carrier underground. Oh, no. Uh, 1930s horror film? 
Well, I'm a newcomer. The other prisoners are naturally curious about me. I explain my situation. It's like, wow. Uh, all the other prisoners are abuzz about what? The what? The Woodstock Music Festival is just starting exactly now. <laughs> and, of course, they wish they were there. Oh, well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Woodstock, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, before bedtime, I chat with some prisoners who were busted after they attempted to import hashish from Kathmandu to the United States. Sobering. <laughs> In a top bunk fatigue from the marathon flame. Finally overwhelms my disorientation and with silent tears streaming down my cheeks. Um, well, the following morning, the FBI guys, you know, they take me down to the district attorney's office in downtown Manhattan. I walk into the DA's office and, wow, I'm so surprised. There's my father, Reynolds. Yeah, haven't seen him in years. Oh, <laughs> we hug each other, you know, and uh, it's been such a long time. Well, the DA explains to me um, the charges against me that I failed to show up for induction into the U.S. military. Uh, please explain myself. It's been like five years late. Well, Tuxie told me always to be honest. I explained to the district attorney in New York City, it's really hard to get mail in the Himalayas. kind of makes sense to him in a way. Look, he's real busy. Okay, you know. um, He says, look, uh, I'm going to release you. Let's make a deal right now. Okay, let's, let's, let's get going here. I will drop all the preliminary charges against you for not, you know, <clears throat> five years ago. Uh, return home in the custody and the responsibility of your father Take the physical examination for the military. We clear? Everybody clear here? At Fort Wayne in Detroit as required by law. Sounds fine to me. <laughs> Going with the flow. Extremely groggy. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, hmm, uh, I have no negative feelings towards the district attorney nor the FBI cops who arrested me. In my heightened Buddhist awareness, these life forms um, live entirely within me, mm -hmm. within my perception of them. And what are they doing? They're performing their roles. They're performing their assigned roles. They are simply me, capital M, capital E. They are the big, they're me. assisting in removing the obstacles that are between me and getting back to my Ganesh cave. In the Greek islands. Oh, yeah. My provincial father. Mm hmm. Mm. Never been to New York City before. New York cabbie took him the long way from the airport. Who cares? 
my dad is so exuberant to actually be flying in an airplane. He's never been in a jet before, and he's been a model airplane freak ever since I was born and can remember. Radio-controlled airplanes, magic birds. Uh, this is his first trip in a jet and in New York. And, all right. New York to Michigan. Hi. Oh, no. A few days later, it's, I, it's Monday morning, I visit my grandmother, Grouchy Alice, <laughs> in Saginaw. And old Alice is watching TV. And I notice the commentator, Hugh Downs, seems utterly amazed that 500,000 young people crammed into a miserable, rainy, muddy environment would experience no incidents of violence. Huh. I guess he never trips on LSD in Kathmandu. Anyway, I watched Jimi Hendrix wrap up the festival with his less than patriotic rendition of the Star Spangled Banner, Woodstock Nation, transcends <laughs> American nation. All right, huh, well, I'm home. Uh, my best friend, childhood friend Guy, uh, studying law at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor, about 100 miles south from Bay City, Saginaw. Since I'm scheduled to appear before a judge in about three weeks, I take the Greyhound bus to Ann Arbor to stay with Guy, have fun with Guy in his private off-campus house. Liberal University of Michigan campus. 1969, writhing with LSD trips, thick bricks of blonde Colombian marijuana, Anti-war demonstrations. <laughs> this is a fun place to be for a hippie. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm spacing out on the campus, on the quad. I noticed a poster for anti-war resistors counseling. I phoned the number, end up talking to a few guys there. Um, they explained to me what is the current situation about draft resisting in Michigan right now. Well... The average prison sentence for not cooperating is two years and two months. Sobering. Uh, these draft resistance uh, advocates. Give me the name of a sympathizer in Detroit named Coyote. And uh, they suggest maybe I could take refuge with her until the court date. Mm -hmm. 